We take from Fly Carpen. Today we're going to tie the Chubby Chaser Leech, which is a fly I've been working on for a little while. It combines some Pat Cohen's carp dub with a short piece of Magnum Rabbit strip to create a headstand leech pattern. And um, so far it's been working out really well for me. This fly is a little meatier. It's got a black color and a headstand attitude and just a little bit of micro flash to help the carp find your fly, just like this one did. Now let's get started with the recipe. Feel free to pause here if you need more time. But we're going to start with some UTC black thread, 140 denier, some size 6 Carp Pro Gapers from CarpPro.com, and a 3.25 millimeter black brass bead from Montana Fly Company. I've taken the liberty of adding a black brass bead and a thread foundation. We're going to add our bead chain eyes just aft of the hook point, a little bit further aft than we would for a trouser worm, for example. We're going to figure those, eight those on really good. And um, then we're going to add some Cohen's Carp Dub, Northern Bites Black, in a dubbing loop. And uh, we're going to go on ahead and make a nice 8 inch dubbing loop, wrap it once or twice, and then come around both thread segments to tighten them up. Now it's going to start about halfway down the bend of the hook and go to behind the eyes. So first let's add about three to four little clumps of the carp dub that's been ripped out of the uh, package. Now we want these clumps to be about two to three knuckles long after we've pushed them together a little bit. And, um, maybe just a little bit shorter than I've got here. This is the longest you'll want this dubbing loop rope to be. So I'm compressing it down just a little bit. You don't want to have too much of this dubbing in there or the tail end of the fly is going to float straight up in the water column and it's not really going to swim correctly. Um, it traps a lot of air, this dubbing does. So I'm uh, spinning it up nice and tight. I'm wrapping it around my pointer finger on my right hand. and I'm going to use my left hand to take the point of my scissors and take it down the length of the dubbing rope and that's going to pop out the wiggly legs so that they aren't uh, uh, kind of tangled and it's going to fluff this up a little bit. Make sure that uh, I've gotten out any loose fibers and we're going to start to wrap. Once again we're about halfway down the bend of the hook not quite as far down the bend as I would go with the trouser worm and we're going to each time we go around we're going to pull back the fibers and make that makes sure that each subsequent wrap isn't over wrapping previous fibers. It's still going to kind of um, tangle itself as you wrap a, a you know kind of a bushy wiry dubbing loop like this but we're gonna be able to fix that on the next step as long as we don't over wrap the previous wraps. Okay, so we're gonna work our way all the way to behind the bead chain and um, going ahead and get it tied down and latched down in front of the bead chain and once behind it and going ahead and cut out the extra length of the dubbing loop. Now we're going to come in with uh, our scissors and just kind of rip this open. It, it's, it, it, over, it wraps itself and tangles itself around and you're basically just untangling it like you would untangle a four-year-old's hair for example and it's gonna the back tail end of this fly is gonna bush right up with you know only going through it six seven ten times with your scissors that's really all it takes a um, dubbing brush really actually doesn't work that great if you're planning on using that instead next step we're gonna add a 5 8 inch long piece of a magnum black rab rabbit strip and what we're going to do is, is we're going to taper either end of that 5 8 inch long strip and then pierce it onto the hook about three quarters of the way down the strip and the goal, and you may have to experiment with this a little bit, is, is that once you pull this rabbit strip down and on that the tapered portion at the front of the rabbit strip sits right in the right place to get tied down between the bead chain and the brass bead just like I'm doing right now. Go ahead and latch that down really good. Wipe it back. Make sure, you know, clean it up a little bit if you can. 
and next we're going to add just a little another little tuft of the Cohen's carp dub in order to kind of align things you're going to repeatedly kind of lightly rip it apart and that's going to align the fibers lengthwise and the little rubber legs and that's going to set it up so that it can drop in perfectly so next we're going to tie that in just in front of the bead chain and behind the brass bead give it a couple good wraps and then we're going to come in and we're going to try and cut out the forward portion of it. And this can be a little bit tricky. It can be hard to get your scissors in there and get this clean. Um, you might end up with a little tuft of the dub sticking up through your thread wraps. Um, you can see here that I'm trying to clean it up with my scissors. You know, if you really can't, don't worry about it. It doesn't look great, but um, it's certainly not going to hit hurt the fishability of the fly. You're still going to catch fish with it. In this case, I was able to clean it up a little bit and um, overwrap some of those scragglies and get a pretty clean head. Next, we're going to come in and uh, whip finish. I like to whip finish twice and avoid glue and any subsequent scent that that might entail. And um, the fly is done. So there you have it. McTagg's Chubby Chaser Leech. I hope you liked the fly. I hope you liked the tying video. If you did, feel free to click on the fish symbol on the lower right and you'll be taken to a page where you can subscribe to my YouTube channel or click on the lower left and you'll be taken to my complete fly fishing for carp video library. Thanks. Bye.